Hello, I'm L Director, and this is Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without a Hollywood budget. Welcome to part one of a two part tutorial where we are going to go ahead and add a exploding, erupting volcano into the background of one of our shots. So if that sounds exciting to you, let's get started. In this first tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to uh, basically do a sky replacement and get good clean edges around the foreground so we can put the volcano and a new sky into the background. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to bring in some footage that I shot on my Ursa Mini 4K and I shot this in ProRes 444 at just 1080p and this is a shot right here. Now you could shoot this at home with a T2i or a GH5 or whatever your camera of choice is. Shoot your own plate but try to get the best quality possible out of it. I actually just for fun, let's see if we can bring this in here too shot this with my T2i because I do have a T2i as well and just to show you the difference in quality here of the video so this is the one off the T2i and you can see it's just it's a lot mushier we switch back over to this one and it's basically the same shot but just look how much clearer my Ursa Mini is compared to the T2i you can see this is just all smudged out and blurred out and especially as we get down to these trees here there's a lot of like these grayish pixels that's gonna create halos using the technique that I'm going to show you. Whereas if we look with Myers the Mini, you gotta zoom in even closer to get to the gray. So the chances of losing this detail, this fine detail in the trees is a lot less with a higher fidelity image to start with. So just keep that in mind. When you're shooting for visual effects, if possible, shoot with something that's gonna be, you know, 10 bit, um, in a, a good flavor, you know, the, the T2i is I think 420 as far as uh, the pixels go. My mini 4K I shot in 444, so every pixel is a pixel of color. There's no blending and stuff like that going on, which is why ultimately we end up with a better image. So let's go ahead and get rid of that nasty T2i stuff. But if all you have is a T2i, by all means use it. It's a great camera to get into filmmaking, um, just not as great for visual effects, but it can be done. It just takes a little bit more work. But I like to make my life easier, and I have the camera, so we're going to use it. First thing we want to do is add in a shuffle node because there is no alpha channel present and when we go to merge later on that can cause some issues. So now if we look down here, we can see that we have an RGBA, RGBA image, which is what we want. If I disable it, we lose the alpha and that causes issues. So let's go ahead and leave our shuffle enabled. I also wanna go ahead and convert this from log to linear. I just wanna have a better image to look at here. So to dial this in, uh, let's see, I think my settings are good with black at nine. We're gonna take our white and put this down to 632. And I want my gamma to be all the way up at one. And that now, if we disable this one, so that's what we started with. This is where we're at now. This is gonna be a lot better to work with. First thing we wanna do is go ahead and track the shot. Now, we're gonna be putting our volcano into the background right back here, and there's gonna be the smoke plume coming up and stuff. And if we look at the shot, we can see it's just a tripod pan up. So again, if you guys are going to shoot your own plate to try this at home, just put the camera on a tripod and all it is is a nice, slow, gentle pan up. And so the volcano is going to peak out around here and then we've got the smoke continuing on uh, the rest of the way there. So that'll be good. By the way, it looks like my scene settings are off. 286 frames and this should also then be 286 frames. There we go. When I brought in that T2i clip, it changed the, uh, the length of that. So let's go ahead and track the shot. Like I said, we're going to put it back here. Now I could bring this into Blender, 3D track it, put my volcano onto a plane, and render that out, and then I'm going to get some parallax with the trees here. But I think if we animate the sky and we add some birds, and of course we're going to have all the, the volcano action happening later on in part two, I think we'll be okay with just doing a 2D track here inside of Natron. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to bring up our tracker. And we'll pop this over here. One thing I also want to do is just throw these into a backdrop real quick. And that way I can move that all around at once. So we're going to take our tracker and uh, activate it. There we go. Let's go and add a point. Because this is a tripod shot, there's no rotation in the image. So I can leave this at translation. And I want to find a point back here, far back to track. And I think we'll use that tree. Right there, that looks really, really good. And we can go ahead and track backwards because I started this in the middle of the shot. All 
All right, back to our keyframe here. Let's see, one more forward, there it is. And let's go ahead and track it forward now. All right, track is finished. And as you can see, we've got the nice straight line here. So that looks good. Uh, what I wanna do is we're on the last frame, that's great. So we'll come up here to transform, set the motion type to match move and change this to transform, set that to the current frame, which is our last frame, 286. And then keeping this linked in case we make changes, we'll just export a transform node. And we're gonna use this a little bit later to put our volcano into the shot. Speaking of volcano, let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm gonna bounce over to Photoshop. You can do this in GIMP if you prefer to. And this is just a shot of Mount St. Helens. I pulled it off the internet. Um, so just you know, get online and, and find an image that you like. And I really liked that we could see the bowl here because this is where it's all gonna come out of and I thought this would allow us to do some cool things. So first thing I wanna do is just go ahead and remove the sky. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And actually let's go ahead and duplicate our background here first. And hit okay, there we go. Again, I use Photoshop. I don't know how to do this in GIMP, I'm sorry. I'm not all about open source. I'm about using what I know and what works. And in this case, Photoshop is like one of those things that, for me, there's no equal. And once you've learned how to do stuff in Photoshop, it's really hard to transition back over to GIMP. I've tried it. I've tried doing stuff just like this in GIMP, and I can't do it. So Photoshop it is for me. Let's see. Add a little bit more right here. Take that in. Cool. Now, ideally, you would not want the edges of the mountain cut off. But because of where I'm going to put this, I know the edge of the frame will cover this edge. And I know I'm gonna have trees covering this. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Uh, let's see, we've got all that blue selected. I wanna go ahead and put this back in right there. And that should be good. So just go ahead and hit delete. Alrighty, cool. So now you can see we've just cut that out like that. The next thing we wanna do is pop back over to Natron real quick. And we need to get ourselves an image that we can work with. So I'm gonna bring up a right node here. And I'm just gonna overwrite this, uh, let's see, what do we wanna call it? I'll call this a uh, lineup plate. Save this PNG. We're gonna run this in from the original footage. There's something really funky I've noticed with the log to linear and trying to render that out into Photoshop. This actually looks better just using our log image. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I want to disable the alpha. I don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna make this as high as possible, 16 bit, and then hit render. When you're done, we come back into Photoshop and open up the image and the, by default our image looks like this now by the way use the last frame in the image I forgot to mention that if we go back to nature on here I'm still at frame 286 my last frame because this is where I want to be lining everything up this is where all the trees are and things so I want to make sure that I give myself enough room to work with for lining up the volcano here and that's also where uh, this transform node originates from remember when we came in the tracker we set the reference frame to 286 which is my last frame. So we need to make sure that we export the last frame to do this. So back to Photoshop, using frame 286, I just used a quick color range tool to select all the white sky and was able to delete that. So what I can do now, come back over here, and we'll take our volcano. Oops. And we'll just go ahead and copy it and bounce back over here, paste it. And you can see it goes underneath the trees, which is good. That's where we want it. And then well, we just go ahead and line it up where we want the volcano to be in the shot. Again, I can cut off that edge. That's good. And I think right about like that is going to look great later on. Now, I want to show you something real quick here. Most of the time when you try to use the techniques I'm going to show you, you're going to end up with these halos around everything. You can see these trees have got these halos around them. And that doesn't look good. That looks amateurish. And with this technique I'm gonna show you, we actually end up not getting the halos. It's gonna look a lot better uh, once we get done running this through Natron here. So I'm going to now go ahead and shut that off. And I'm going to save this as Volcano. Hit save. Yes, I wanna replace it, that's fine. So I'm just saving a PSD file. You could save it as a PNG if you wanted to. The big thing is making sure you keep your alphas. I'm just saving it as a PSD Photoshop file. And I can go back into Natron and read this into the shot. So I come down to my volcano, bring it back in. 
And uh, just for fun here, we are on the last frame. If I hook this up and we now merge this into the shot. Let's put this out of the way. I don't need that. There, we can see that the volcano is exactly where I wanted it. I don't have to come in here now with another transform node and modify it because I already took care of that in Photoshop. I lined it up in here within the frame. So now it comes in right where I want it to. And because this has the, the motion tracking applied, I can pan through the shot and you can see how that moves with it. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and place this behind the mountains. So it is merged on top and we're gonna use a mask to cut out everything we don't want. So let's go ahead now and we're gonna add a few more nodes. I want to add, first off, a color corrector. I'm gonna run this into the log to linear and let's go ahead and add a dot node just to help us stay organized here. For the color correction, first thing I wanna do is, let's go ahead and view it and I wanna pull out all the color from the image. I wanna work with just a black and white image. And then we're going to take the contrast and start cranking this up a little bit here. And uh, let's go a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, right around, where was it? Yeah, somewhere around here should be good. And then I also wanna take the gain and I'm gonna jack that all the way up. So I've blown out the sky completely now, right? Yes. Now, if we view our merge and run that in the mask input, and then come down to the merge and make this, I always forget that I have to do this right away. There we go. Oh man, that looks hideous. What on earth? That's horrible. And uh, so let's go and fix it. We're gonna add a grade node here. And if I flip these around, that fixes that just like so. Now I've got a little bit of a halo action going on. It's not horrible, but there is a little bit. I could potentially maybe take my white point and drop that down just a little bit and that will kind of help clean up those edges just a little bit. So we'll go somewhere right around here. And then, uh, let's see, does multiply do anything? Yeah, multiply will help take those edges out just a little bit more too. So if you look, you can see we don't have the halos that we had in the Photoshop image. Now there is one issue we do have here and that is using this blending mode option and this masking to put the mountain behind the trees, we lose some of this pole and you can see we lose the roof right here and we lose some stuff over here. But fortunately, this is a real easy fix and we're just going to use a roto. All right, but before we do add a roto, we do wanna make sure we bounce over to the last frame because that's where everything is coming from. And if we wanna be able to use this transform node to track everything in, we wanna make sure we do it on that right, on the correct reference frame. So I'm going to now go ahead and add a roto and I'm just gonna start up here, bring it down, keeping it above the roofs that I wanna keep because I know that this pole got cut out and I wanna keep it. Put that in and I'm just going to spend some time really making sure that I do this well. You can get up close and personal with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be good. I'm not gonna worry about the other one back there. I don't think that was an issue. Okay, good. Now we got it down to there. Let's zoom back out. And then uh, we'll just kind of finish bringing this through here. Boom, perfect. Now, if I come down here and we add a, another merge, we throw the roto into it, and view our final shot, there's the mountain. You can see the pole is all in there now. Everything looks good. Again, if I turn this off, uh, this off, there we go. That's what we had before. So we lost all that. And uh, you can see we lost detail here in the roofs. But we re-enable what we just did. We get all that detail back. We get the pole back. And because it comes before the transform, uh, we'll bring this up so you can see. As I go through, the roto is already keyframed with it. So I didn't have to do any hand animation. It just gets tracked into the shot. Uh, automatically, so that's pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and add in a new sky to the shot too. I think we need a, definitely some new clouds. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to read in some clouds. Again, I just got these off the internet. And I want to add a merge here and put the clouds as the B. 
So you can see them just right back there. Run the clouds through a transform node. And actually, we need to run them through a shuffle as well. Because otherwise, we lose that B alpha. There we go. Take the transform. Let's scale these suckers up. And we'll go ahead and stick them where we want them. So let's go to the first frame of the shot, because I do want to animate these. Actually, let's line it up here at the end. Find the section of clouds that we want to use. These are looking pretty good. These aren't the highest resolution clouds, but I think they'll do the trick for what we're looking for here. So at the end of the shot, I want them lined up. Yeah, probably right about there. I'll have it work out well. Set key. And then I'll go back one frame. And let's move these over to there. So that set another keyframe. Now, if I go to my dope sheet, I can actually move these keyframes to where they need to be. So this needs to go to the last frame, 286. And then this one needs to go to our start frame. If we can find it. There it is. Frame zero. Now let's go frame one. There we go. And then uh, just to be sure, we'll select those. Right click it, interpolation, and make it linear. So we're going to have a nice straight line going between those. Back to the node graph. And now the clouds should move as everything goes and everything pans up nice and neat. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and really work on now trying to blend this all together. We got to get this all massaged in, right? So let's add a, a color corrector here for the clouds. And I'm going to do the same thing here for the volcano. Let's drop these down a little bit. There we go. The screen line's annoying me. If you want to hide stuff like that, Shifty hides your links. There's still a little green circle here telling you that there's a linked expression. And hit Shifty, and then you can see what that expression is, where it's being linked to. But we know that this transform came from the tracker. So I'm going to hide the green line. So now comes the fun part. We need to massage these into the shot. So let's start with the clouds and I don't know, try to blow them out a little bit. It's an overcast day. Everything should be washed out. It's gloomy, desaturated. So we'll suck the color right out of it like that. That's not too bad. And then I think my shadows, now let's take the midtones. See if we can lift those a little bit. No, let's do the shadows. Lift those. There we go, that's looking a lot better there. And then uh, go back to our master and then maybe just take some of that contrast out of the image too. Gives it kind of that nice overcast look. And now we can take the mountain and uh, start playing with this. So I'm gonna go to my mids and I wanna cancel out some of that blue hue. So I'm adding just a little bit of yellow into it yellowish orange and then uh, let's pull some saturation out of the mountain increase the contrast of it a little bit let's make that bigger how does that look that looks pretty good I would totally buy that um, yeah I think I think that'll work and again you know you can see as we just kind of scrub through this here everything's looking pretty good all right, well, I went ahead and I made a few little changes to this. I didn't want to bore you guys with it because the main focus of this training was putting the matte painting in the background behind the trees and showing how to key that out with our simple matte over here using a color correct and a gray node. So what I did is I just kind of organized the node graph a little bit more, cleaned things up, added a few other backdrops of things. I also added some birds into the image. If we zoom in here, you can see the birds kind of flying through the air, these little black specks. And it just adds a little bit of scale to the shot. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video just because it takes a little bit of time to line them up in Blender and render them out and bring them in. And uh, there's other videos out there. I've got a video in the training course that shows you how to do this. Sean Kennedy at Open Visual Effects shows you how to do it. And uh, so there's plenty of ways to add birds to the shot. You can add airplanes if you wanted to. Uh, but that was just something extra I wanted to add as a little nice touch. But it wasn't the focus of the video, which is why I didn't show you how to do it. But one last thing I do want to show you, because this is meant to be something that like maybe you would use in a movie, and I shot this framed out with a 240 aspect ratio. I had 
uh, overlays on the camera. I want to preview that just to make sure that everything is good before we call this a day for part one. So what I need to do is uh, add a reformat node, which you can see I've already done down here. And then I'm going to add under, uh, let's see, generate Ignite Letterbox. So these are the HitFilm Ignite plugins. And they have this really cool Letterbox one that I, I like. And it does the trick, I think. And there you go. You can see it masks off the top and the bottom. Now, the reason for the reformat node, just so you guys can see here, because we've got so many different uh, resolutions and things that we're working with, even though it's getting comped down to HD, it kind of freaks out if you go to add this anyway. So if I type in letterbox, add in the Ignite letterbox, I go to try to hook it up, it's going to freak out and it throws this error message. So what you have to do is you have to add a reformat. And we'll just throw this down to our final image, which is HD, 1920 by 1080. And then uh, now if we hook up the letterbox, it doesn't freak out and it actually likes it now. And uh, let's make this full screen. And so if we just kind of click through again, I'm not playing this back because I am on a crappy laptop and I just don't have the processing power to preview it while I do a screen capture in real time. But uh, you guys at home could you know do your preview. So I'm just gonna click through to kind of show kind of how everything's looking. And uh, I'm liking it. I think this is good. There's my birdies. And I think that will wrap up uh, this episode here, or this, this video. So again, the focus was adding a matte painting and the sky replacement into the background of a shot. We animated the clouds from side to side. We added some birds here just for fun to give it a little extra scale. But most importantly, we got a nice, good, clean mat uh, around the trees. And you can see that looks really nice. We're not getting any funky halos or anything like that. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and tune back for the next video or check back for the next video where we're going to jump into Blender and generate the volcanic explosion of death and doom. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really cool. So make sure to subscribe so you can get that video when I upload it. Thanks for watching. I'm El Director. This has been Indie Rebel, Hollywood Effects without a Hollywood budget.